welcome to this session. In this session, the main topics we are going to cover is to give an overview of the structure of financial markets, types of financial instruments, types of financial intermediaries. So, we will be mainly focusing on an overview of these three different aspects. So, let us begin with the structure of financial markets. So, overall the financial markets can be categorized into two markets, one is called debt market and the other one is equity markets. So, in the case of debt market, a uh, debt market is mainly for the markets for bonds, loans and mortgages and there can be different types of uh, debt instruments that is called short term and long term. And the second market that is called equity markets, this is called markets for stocks. And in the case of stock market, the owner, those who buy stocks, they have the claims on the net income and assets of a business. So, then you can see that these two types of instruments that the debt, mar debt instrument and equity instrument or debt market and equity market. And you know that the debt market is mainly lending loan or through the suppose you are depositing your money in the bank or you are lending your uh, money to a corporate or you, that means you are buying a bond or you are buying uh, government securities, government bonds. So, you know that there is relatively less risky, but you often see that uh, the return will be very less. At the same time in equities, you can see that is very highly risky. So, sometime you can see that they expect high return in equities. Let us also see what are the advantages of debt and equities. You can see that in the case of debt, suppose if you are a lender, when you are lending your money to a uh, corporate, to a corporation or to government, a uh, lender you get the first preference on claims on the assets and income of the borrower and only the, after that only the equity holder uh, get a claim. So, that means the first uh, claim on uh, the assets and income of the borrower is on the lender, not on the equity holder. So, in this case we can see that equity holder is only a residual claimant only. That means when you are buying a stock of a company, you are only a residual claimant, but when you are uh, lending your money to a corporations or government, then you have the first preference on claims on their assets and income uh, when they default. When it comes to equity market, you might have heard that, that the primary and secondary equity markets. So, what is meant by primary markets and what is meant by secondary markets? So, primary markets means where the new issue of a security happens. So, often investment banks underwrite securities that means IPO initial public offerings. So, where the transactions of initial public offering happens, we call it primary markets. Then the secondary market means the stock testing that we widely discuss, uh, we are all familiar uh, secondary markets. Secondary market or stock markets where the transaction of an already issued security, the already issued IPO that happens. So, where brokers and dealers are involved, right. So, the stock market is a place where the transaction of an already issued security or equity happens. So, is there any relationship between primary and secondary markets? So, sometimes we see that when the stock market perform better, stock market perform better, that the secondary market perform better, you know that the income, the return of equity holder, the shareholders increase, not of the firm. Firms uh, capital won't increase, only the shareholders firm uh, return, their assets increase. That happen when the secondary market perform better. But our question is that when the secondary markets perform better, whether you just I stated here that the income of the firms of the or the company won't increase. But you can see that when the secondary market, the share of a company performs better, they can actually issue the IPO at a higher rate. The, the return, the capital that they can ra raise using the IPO or using through the primary market, they can raise more capital because there is a 
high correlation relationship between secondary market and the performance the price the stock price and the price of the ipo so when the share of a company is performing better then you obviously see that investors are more interested in that company so that when they issue ipo per unit of share they can raise more capital so in that way there is a relationship between primary and secondary markets not only that when the secondary market is performing better that means there is more demand for the securities or the share of these companies you can also see that more capital is moving to the stock markets and because of that you can also see that a companies can issue new ipos and they'll be uh, incentivized to issue raise more capital so in that way when the secondary market is performing better you can also see that primary market also will be, uh, perform better and as a result economy as a whole you can see that there will be more capital flow or more investment in the economy so as a result economy will be doing better and more investment in the economy means more production of more economic activity more production of goods and services in that way the performance of stock market is highly beneficial for the overall welfare of the economy that is what sometimes we see that the working or the efficiency or the performance of secondary market is often considered as an indicator of the health of the economy sometime when you discuss debt and equity markets we also sometime see that the derivative markets so when it comes to debt and equity markets you can see that we already discussed where actual claims are sold and bought for the immediate cash payments but when it comes to derivative markets see investors make agreement that are settled later and the mainly the derivative markets are mainly called futures options swaps and mainly here the transfer of risk is happened is done here the investors make agreement that are settled later so in this course we will be focusing mainly on debt and equity market and we will be giving little attention to the derivative market so if you are interested more on derivative market i would suggest you uh, offer the course on derivative and risk management where these aspects will be very thoroughly covered so let's now discuss different aspects of the the overall the financial market we can further classify into another group uh, another classification we can make that is called money and capital markets even the stock market the equity market and debt market we are going to make another classification uh, is called money and capital markets and let us see what is meant by money markets so in the case of money markets money markets deal in short term debt instruments mostly less than 1 year so these are markets for highly liquid very safe and short term transactions and is mainly involve debt securities that means cash equivalents that can be interchangeable for money and short notice and these are primarily used by governments and corporations to keep their cash flow steady and investors to make a modest profit and in the money markets mainly mostly the banks are the important participants in the money markets and however we can also see that so many other uh, participants including governments and our corporations also in, uh, participates then coming to about the capital market capital markets deal in long term debt and equity instrument that means greater than 1 year so all the transaction that involves for the instruments for debt and equity instruments more than one year we are going to call them capital markets it refers to the entirely the entirety of the stock and bond markets and companies that issue stock and long term bonds do so for the purpose of raising money for their long term operations long term borrowings and uh, long term investment for example company issuing ipos that is actually part of capital markets so let's now discuss the second topic that is called types of financial instruments what is meant by a financial instrument financial market instruments a financial instrument is a, is the written legal obligation of one party to transfer something of value usually money to another party at some future date under specified conditions so the examples of financial instruments are stocks uh, bonds 
bank deposit insurance policies etc so let's discuss some of the key financial market instruments under two headings that is dealing with the money market instruments and capital market instruments so let's start with uh, money market instruments so treasury bills this is one of the money market instruments so treasury bills means uh, issued by government so you can see that one month three months six months maturities the borrowing by government for one month three months and six months so these are often sold at a discount the advantage of government treasury bill is that there is very low default risk or nearly you can see the zero default risk for uh, well performing governments and these treasury bills are most often uh, held by banks then another kind of instrument uh, money market instrument is bank deposits we are going to call it short term certificate of deposits these are sold by bank to depositors there are uh, negotiable certificate of deposits as well these are sold in the secondary market as well because they do have the right to transfer sell and buy by exchange the series then another group then we let's also see that the consumer loans that is another kind of uh, money market instruments these are short term loans to consumers then commercial papers that is also short term but that issued by large banks and well known corporation to meet their day to day operations and liquidity uh, requirements um and some more money market instruments one is called repo agreements repurchase agreements uh, these are very short term usually with a maturity of 2 weeks for which treasury bills serve as the collateral and large corporations are the most important lenders in this market and then another kind of money market instrument is interbank uh, borrowing that is called in the one example is fed fund rate fed fund market that is called in the us fed fund market means borrowing between among banks so these are called over law overnight loans between banks these are very short term so the overnight loans between banks it often happen mainly to meet the their cash reserve requirements the cash reserve requirement these are mandated by the central bank to the commercial banks that means a certain fraction of their total deposit should be kept with the central bank as cash reserve so sometime commercial bank they face deficit in their in meeting their cash reserve so in order to cover up in order to meet this deficit these banks they borrow from each other so that is called overnight loans between banks this is uh, one of the money market instrument and this is actually actually a closely watched uh, barometer of tightness of credit market conditions based upon the overnight bank rate one can come to know that what is the liquidity conditions in the credit market let's now look at the capital market instruments uh, one is called stocks equity and equity means you already aware that means ownership in the income and assets of a business that means share you can also call it as share then called mortgages loans loans to purchase house land other real uh, structures where the structure or lands itself serves as collateral for loans further capital market instruments are corporate bonds this means long term bonds issued by corporations major buyers are insurance companies pension funds individuals etc then comes government securities issued by governments to meet their uh, budget deficit government securities are bought mostly by central bank commercial banks households and foreigners and as you know that the default risk of uh, government securities are very less and because that is one of the reason why commercial banks household they prefer to buy government securities then another kind of market instrument is municipal bonds municipal bonds are primarily issued by state governments uh, and local governments and normally the interest income uh, for municipal bonds are exempted from income tax then comes consumer and commercial bank loans so the long term loans given to consumers and businesses so these are the capital market instruments so in our course uh, we will be using 
uh, these three terms often sometimes people get get confused with this treasury bills treasury notes and treasury bonds so let us make it clear what does it these three terms means so treasury bills means this is issued for terms less than a year so this is a money market instrument treasury bills and capital market instrument that the second one is treasury notes uh, this is a capital market in instrument treasury notes issued for terms of 2 3 5 and 10 years this is another capital instrument then we use treasury bonds issued for terms of 30 years etc issued for a very long term this is called treasury bonds and the instrument that we discuss here the money market instruments and the capital market instrument that we discuss here covered just gave i have only given a brief overview of these instruments and we will be using these terms this instrument while discussing uh, various aspects of financial system and financial market in our course so here my objective was to just to give you an overview but what are the various aspects in thoroughly in appropriate context relevant context we will be discussing uh, these financial instruments let us now move to the third aspects that is called type of financial intermediaries so we can better understand the type of financial intermediaries by going through various type of financial intermediaries starting with depository institutions depository institutions include mainly commercial banks uh, savings banks and credit unions who accepts deposits and make loans we also call them banking institutions but banking institution also we interchangeably we use the term banking institution or depository institutions at in includes as i just mentioned commercial bank savings banks uh, credit unions etc then comes insurance companies insurance companies another type of financial intermediaries they accept premiums which they invest in securities and real estate in return for promising compensation to policy holders should certain events occur so about the insurance companies we can broadly put into two types one is called uh, life insurance companies and where who protect uh, against the financial risk of untimely death then the general insurance companies general insurance companies they protect the property and casualty insurers protect against personal injury loss and losses from theft uh, accidents and fire this is general insurance then the third category third type of financial intermediaries is pension funds who invest individual and company contributions in stocks uh, bonds and real estate in order to provide payments to retired workers that is their liabilities the example for pension funds in india the employee provident fund um, public provident funds and new pension schemes here what it happened that you know that the pension fund for example uh, employee provident fund organization they accept the contribution from employee and employees and at the time of retirement they give a lump sum amount the corpus they give to the employee and also they give pensions right and similarly um, new pension schemes they also uh, work on the same principle almost same principles and in order to make the payment because their liabilities are the contribution made by the employees so the pension is so in order to make the compensation to them the payment to them this pension fund they invest their money uh, their fund liabilities in uh, stocks bonds and other assets to earn income another group of uh, financial intermediaries is called securities firms securities firms this include uh, brokers investment banks underwriters mutual fund companies private equity firms venture capital firms etc brokers and investment banks issue stocks bonds for corporate customers trade them and advise customers and about the mutual company mutual fund companies they pool the resources of individuals and companies and invest them in portfolios of bonds stocks and real estate 
and we also there is also hedge funds do the same for small group of wealthy investors and we'll discuss these uh, firms security firms in appropriate context in our course then we see that what are their role in the working of financial market financial system then another group of intermediary financial intermediaries is called finance companies we also call them non banking financial intermediaries they raise funds directly in the finance ma financial markets in order to make loans to individuals and firms so they tend to specialize in particular types of loans such as mortgage automobile certain types of business equipments while their assets are similar to banks their liabilities are debt instrument that are traded and financial markets not deposits so the important point is that these financial companies they won't be coming under the direct purview of central banking system and deposits are not their prime source of raising uh, capital thank you